everybody and welcome to this video. My name is Janis and in the background you can already hear the sound that I'm going to show you in this video and I made it with Ableton Live's analog synth. It's some type of simple, beautiful and warm analog synthesizer sound that you can perfectly use for just some small melodies, also for actually some bass notes. But yeah, if you want to add some kind of analog synth touch to your music, that's a very good starting point and it doesn't sound too harsh. It doesn't sound too digital. I tried my best to make it sound as warm as possible. And yeah, without further ado, let's just jump right into it. So first we're going to load the analog synth or you can also try with any other synth because analog is kind of a simple one. So you will find most of the settings in many other synthesizer plugins as well. I have a short melody snippet here that I'm going to use for demonstration purposes. So I don't have to play all the time. It sounds like this. So yeah, it sounded really harsh in the beginning because uh, the frequency was so open and it's not the most beautiful thing. So first thing we do is deselect the second oscillator because we only want to work with one. And I really had to learn for myself to appreciate working with just one oscillator because when I was trying to build my first synth sounds, I always thought, ah, I have two oscillators, maybe even three, I have to use them. They must add something. And then Actually, two years ago, I bought my Vermona analog synthesizer and there you can have four different independent voices. But all the time it's like one oscillator and I realized, wow, you can make one oscillator sound so beautiful. And also by just focusing on one oscillator, you really try hard to get all out of it before you are just like, okay, it's not perfect, but I'm sure it's going to get better if I add a second oscillator, which is probably not going to happen. So what I did already by intuition was bringing down the filter frequency because we want to have it at maybe around 90 because we are going to apply some envelope to the filter. Also a little bit of resonance because it just adds a tiny bit of excitement in the upper end. Still, it doesn't sound amazing now. Now it's very dull because we barely have any attack or overtones or anything that could make this sound exciting. So we have to create some envelope and let's first make some amplitude envelope and actually this one we're going to open fully. That means we don't need the decay. Also the attack has to be like there right away and just some release of maybe two seconds because we want it to sound kind of smooth and not this kind of sound where it dies off quickly. And one thing that I also like to do is lowering this amount for the velocity sensitivity because this is the parameter that you change for the velocity. So if I press a note softly or loudly, there's a kind of a huge difference. And I feel like for synthesizer sounds with analog, I like this to be slightly under one because I don't know, for piano, it's great to have the kind of velocity response, but for synthesizer sounds, they can really quickly sound confusing because you have jumps and like dynamics that you don't really want to have because you want some more balanced sound. And I mean, it's up to you, but just from my experience, if you feel like something feels weird, check this envelope on the amplitude setting and lower it because this way you will get some more balanced playing experience. Now let's look at the filter envelope. And here, a thing I really like is to work with some drive setting because I like to use those ASIM or SIM3 because they add more character to the sound. And I would say they add some overtones and yeah, drive the sound a little. So depending on what sound you have, you can even get some distortion out of it, but I don't think so much but anyways you can hear if I change the setting I mean obviously it gets louder because it gets driven more but um, also if you now if we now apply the envelope and try to make it a little more exciting we will actually get more sound out of it so I like to increase this amount here because it's kind of the amount of the filter envelope to maybe five and a half and I feel like already, I mean, it's louder. You never should get fooled by that, but I feel like there's already more character, which is great. And the filter really is the thing that can add the character because if you don't use much of the filter, you just have the kind of plain sound. So it's just something you want to experiment with. And for the envelope, let's make the decay a little longer. And the release really long. Because this way we get some almost natural reverb effect. And you can also see that I left the sound on here in this menu on the right, you can see eight voices. So we can have some polyphony. It's not some lead sound where you only have like a monophonic sound because 
It would be a different vibe. I like that here the kind of notes overlap because it can also create some warmth. Also some more things here. I like to add a little bit of key tracking which means that for lower notes the filter doesn't get applied as much as for higher notes. So you have like some natural motion that's going on. And also a little bit of the velocity impact. So the stronger you hit the key the more the filter opens. But again those are small additions because like the here the velocity on the filter envelope and the key tracking and for the amp you have the same settings. I only use this one though because I don't like it for don't like the keyboard tracking for the amplitude envelope but this just means that you have a little movement depending on where you play and this just adds some dynamics to the sound without sounding too overwhelming and as I said you have to be careful to not put those values too high because quickly the synth kind of overreacts but in small amounts it can just be some nice addition to make the sound a little more musical. So let's once more listen to what we've got now. We can also make the melody a bit faster for this example. And I mean it sounds cool but still we're lacking a little bit of character and that's where some modulations come in. For example the vibrato which is really amazing. I usually try 6 hertz in the beginning but here I like to choose something slower like 1 hertz and see. It adds this kind of warm detune effect. And I also like on this setting here have it come in a little later so you have the initial attack and then the vibrato comes in so it doesn't distract too much in the beginning. It's more something that evolves and also the attack is great so it kind of slowly merges in. Which is something I really find enjoyable and adds a lot of beauty to the sound. Also some glide is kind of cool. Do you want to make it legato so it's smoother? Not too important but also kind of pleasant. And in addition to the vibrato you can also play with the LFO1 in this case because LFO1 applies to oscillator 1. And maybe even try this time with 6 Hz if you can add some nice additional vibrato to the pitch. Yeah, and then you just play with those kind of things. Make sure it's not too goofy. Also for the LFO you can have a little bit of a delay or attack. And just fine tune those until you're really happy with the sound. By the way, if you happen to enjoy this video, I'd be super thankful if you could take one quick second to click the like button. And once we're at the subject, of course you're also warmly invited to subscribe to this channel because you can find way more videos like this and will also find way more videos like this in the future. And now we kind of did what we can do inside analog or I've shown you those things that can add warmth inside the synthesizer. but. There are some things we can still do to make it warmer that we can't do inside analog which is adding some chorus effect and also for this video I decided to add some reverb because it just makes this type of sound really nice and I think you always have to adjust the reverb to the song you're using it in. But I just want to give you an example of what kind of nice spacious reverb you can create for this type of sound. But let's do the chorus first because you would think I'm going to use the chorus plugin but I'm actually going to use the delay plugin which I prefer for chorusing effects because somehow I made the experience that it sounds warmer and I mean maybe you love the chorus and then just go ahead and try it but I want to show you how I use the delay because it's really cool and um, make sure they are not synced anymore and have them like 5 and 10 milliseconds kind of like this less feedback but the important thing is that the rate maybe you should start with 1 hertz and then you apply this, apply this to the time which means that now those two delay time settings are going to get modulated by some type of LFO 
and I always increase, decrease the size of the filter a little. And then we can listen to the sound and just dial this in. Actually here I like it if it's more subtle. Just makes the whole sound sing a little more, which is kind of beautiful. And you can also play a little with the frequency band because you can hear that here in the mid-range there's a lot of modulation, so maybe you want to have less of it but increase the amount. Sometimes like this you get more of the chorus but less intense, so you can always fine-tune those settings. And yeah, I just find that this really adds some warmth to the sound. And finally, let's try this reverb and I'm going to do it with some return track. And I don't use the Ableton reverb so much, but here I also tried really hard to find a setting uh, that I actually enjoy. And it's going to be some quite long reverb, so... Again, it has to fit to your song, but sometimes for those warm synthesizer sounds, they can really, really shine with some extra reverb and make the quality high. And I also figured out that I like the reverb most at some super low size settings. So what did I have? I think I had like 0 0.8 because there it sounds more like a plate. And yeah, I really like this kind of vintage long played sound. It really goes well with analog synthesizer sounds. So that's what I try to go for here. And also the decay time is going to be five seconds, which seems crazy, but I kind of enjoy it for the sound and we're just going to fine tune it because we need some early reflections. Still sounds really ugly. We want it to come in a little later. We want to apply some low cut. Then we want to work a bit with the diffusions. See that we don't have too much of this high metallic shimmer. Then the scale is something that um, always makes the sound darker if it's like fully up, so I don't want it. I actually want some brightness, so it's kind of down to like, I don't know, 16. And the density is really far up because this just adds some of this pleasant diffusion that makes the sound just a little more pleasant to listen to. Oh, no. I forgot to turn, we had some weird sound. Now we, of course, you have to, if you use it as a return track, you have to increase the dry wet knob to 100%. And then I like to mix it a little, that the early reflections are a little softer. And you see, now by bringing up the diffusion, there we actually get some kind of nice texture. I like to also add a little bit of chorus. I um, want to also add what I always find really cool to just add some side chaining because it's particularly beautiful if it kind of comes out once the initial punch from the synthesizer is gone. And so if we use this analog as our side chain, and also make the release. sounds even a bit smoother, so it always gets this tiny duck when there is the initial hit. And then you can also see if maybe that's too much reverb for you. Also depending on the song, you can also try it. Like you can get very nice spacious effects if you actually increase this and if you're not scared of making it look really ridiculous. And of course, if the synth has space, long reverb times can really work nicely. It's really a matter of just, um, just mixing the different elements you're having. 
And that's everything I wanted to show you. If something was weird to you or you didn't understand a specific step, just don't hesitate to drop some question in the comments. I'm always gladly responding to them. And also, if you haven't already and you like this video, please don't forget to quickly hit the like button because it always helps to show this video just to a couple of more people. Also, of course, you're warmly invited to subscribe to my channel where you can find more videos and tutorials about sound making and also other music production subjects like this. And also notice that I have a Skillshare page where you can find some more in-depth classes also all around music production. And there's a link down below in the description with which one you can access Skillshare one month for free, no strings attached, and just try those classes and see if they are for you. Apart from that, I wish you inspiration with whatever it is that you create and really hope to see you soon again at this channel. Bye.